Hello, seventh grade, and welcome to math. Today we talk about something called geometric probability. The idea of quantifying your chances of, say, hitting the bullseye. Now, if you were to close your eyes and throw a beanbag at this, what would be the chance of you hitting a small circle, assuming that your beanbag lands within the big circle? Well, you could say your chances were not that good, kind of good, sort of good, maybe bad. Yeah, and that all works to a point, but math gives us a way to quantify that, to put numbers to it, to be able to judge this number versus that number is a better way of doing things than saying kind of bad versus uh, almost good. All right, so that's what we're talking about here. How do we give the probability, the chance, the likelihood that your beanbag is going to hit that little circle inside the big circle? All right, well, we understand, of course, that probability is a ratio. It compares the favorable outcomes to the total things that could happen. All right. Here we have a little square inside a bigger square, all right? Basically, in geometric probability, we're just comparing two areas in a ratio. In other words, if I'm asking, what's the chances of hitting something inside the little square, but still inside the big square? In other words, in this type of probability, we don't uh, take into account the chance that you might miss the target completely, all right? In other words, we're assuming that you're going to get it inside the big square, but once you assume that you can get it inside the big square, what's the chances of hitting the little square? Well, again, that's comparing favorable, the little square, to total, the big square. So, in geometric probability, we compare the areas. The area of the little square, 1 times 1, is 1, compared to the <coughs> total area, 4 times 4, 16, says that we can quantify your chances of hitting the little square as one chance out of 16. Make sense? Yeah. All right. We can put a square inside a circle. Same scenario. We're assuming that you're not going to miss the target completely. And now I've got a 2 by 2 square inside a circle with a radius of 4. So what's the chance of hitting the square? Well, that would be the ratio of the area of the square compared to the area of the circle. The area of the square is psi squared, 2 squared. The area of the circle is pi r squared. Radius is 4. So we simplify that. 2 squared is 4. 4 squared is 16 pi. And so we get 16 pi. So we're comparing 4 to 16 pi, we put that in simplest terms, and we'll just leave pi as pi and say that we've got one chance out of 4 pi of hitting that. A little less than 1 out of 12, for example. All right. Uh, if we compare circles to circles, hit the bullseye, right? You've got a smaller circle inside a bigger circle. We're interested in the chances of hitting the smaller circle. And again, we're assuming you can hit the target completely, so they talk about the dart or whatever lands inside the big circle. That's an assumption we have to make. Otherwise, you know, the probability, the ratio is infinite. You have very, very tiny chance if you can't hit the big circle. Let's face it. So in this case, we've got pi r squared compared to pi r squared, the little pi r squared compared to the big pi r squared. And 2 radius compared to 6 radius. And the neat thing about that is that the pi's cancel out. So that we just simply have a fraction that we put in simplest terms. And we see that you got a 1 out of 9 chance of perhaps hitting that center circle. In other words, throwing darts 9 times, you would expect to get one of them in there assuming that they just went all around at random, all right? You could probably get one out of nine in there in a reasonable assumption there, all right? Um, that's about it. That's as, mm, mm, as uh, tough as I can make it. So give it a try, lesson 101, A to E, 2 to 4, and 9 to 10, 
and make sure all your fractions are in simplest terms.